did a lot of work with Star Trek, the next generation, and consulted a lot, and, uh, and it, it made the show more realistic as much as it could. You know, I grew up watching Star Trek The Next Generation. It's still my favorite Star Trek series. Wow, it's um, amazing. Yeah, so that they're, they're consulting with JPL was before my time, but I'm excited to hear about that. But this one was not, so... Uh, Why not? You know, how would you rate how they did on this particular one? I'm thrilled that they spent so much time in the movie um, describing what's compelling about Europa. Uh, how the, the same things that Kevin and I think about uh, in our, our daily lives and the reason we devote so much of our time to understanding Europa, namely, um, you know, that Europa has an ocean with twice the liquid water um, on all of Earth, uh, you know, in a body the size of our moon. Uh, and it's likely that that ocean has persisted for much of the history of the solar system. So this is a world unto itself with processes uh, not unlike those that occur on Earth, but this just occur on much different scales than anything we know on Earth. So we have an, you know, an ocean that's 100 kilometers deep, perhaps, um, and water in contact with rock that could sustain hydrothermal systems like those we find on Earth and could sustain the same kinds of processes that might have given rise to life on Earth. Is, is the space travel uh, in the movie uh, pretty accurate, like what to, um, that you would imagine it to be so? I thought um, the movie did a really good job of portraying uh, a mission that works within the confines of available technology. Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, they spent a, we spent a lot of time talking about uh, uh, what artificial gravity might look like mm -hmm. uh, and what kind of redundancies might need to be employed uh, you know, to, to, to have a um, believable uh, space mission and for the, the crew to think really hard about uh, um, you know, how to address problems that might come up during the mission. Did you, were, were, did, were either of you on set a lot of the time, a lot of the days, just saying, hey, listen, this is not right? Or we weren't on set, right? but we did interact with the, with the, uh, with the cast and uh, the director a little bit uh, during the filming. Okay. And if they had a question about authenticity or something, you guys were there to yeah. happily answer. Yeah. Now, the first, uh, some, someone threw this question to me via internet, internet. it was a the first five minutes of the movie actually revealed that it was a private space mission. Um, the question from um, someone from the internet saying, why can't you guys do this? What does this say about, um, you know, like NASA or JPL can't, you know, try to um, have a fantasy of going to uh, Europa ourselves? Why would it have to be like a private thing? We would love to do it, uh, and uh, so uh, tell those people to, to talk to their Congress people and, and, and uh, push on it, and, and uh, part of what's exciting about this film is that it gets Europa into the public consciousness, and, mm -hmm. and uh, um, many people just don't appreciate the, the potential that it holds, the questions that it can answer, um, and so um, part of of, uh, of pushing this kind of exploration forward is, is getting the public excited about it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, to, to tell that person now <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing our best and uh, they need to help us out. What other planetary bodies might have some sort of similar ecosystem that might support life in, in our solar system or whatever that you guys are eyeing? Yeah. Enceladus, Saturn's moon Enceladus is, is, is sort of the Oh, next, um, I would argue, most scientifically compelling target for um, presenting the conditions that work for life as we know it. Um, in other words, Enceladus, we think, has a liquid water ocean, the elements needed for life and the energy needed for life. Uh, whether or not Enceladus has had an ocean there for a significant amount of time is a different story. And, um, and so uh, it's a great target, but not as good as Europa, because we think Europa's ocean has been and around. Unfortunately for Hollywood, Mars, no. Well, <laughs> fortunately Mar for Hollywood. Mars is obviously a, a top priority for JPL and, yeah. and, and NASA, but uh, part of what distinguishes Europa is that it's a place where we think we can find living life. Mm. He was mentioning, they were mentioning that there is a planned mission for Europa at one point coming up yeah. for you guys, probably in like so what, 2012. We've been 
studying, and I want to clarify that Kevin here, Kevin and I are here on vacation. Um, yeah, yeah, so, exactly. so we're not speaking for NASA right. or JPL, but um, no, um, NASA has been studying uh, various designs for a mission to Europa uh, since the Galileo days, since even before Galileo mission ended. Um, so there's there's a mission concept that's very mature uh, and cost effective within. What, what could be achieved uh, currently uh, to answer all of the top science questions. Uh, just a question of um, whether there's the will uh, to support that. It's, it's a big uh, monetary commitment for, for the federal government. So are you guys like rock stars with all of your coworkers? Because you say you're here on vacation, so you're just like, I'm going to Comic-Con and I'm just going to rub shoulders with like A-list. The science community doesn't really care about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the science community doesn't care about this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> they don't like that. Yeah, but, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like no one is impressed. <laughs> is robotic exploration probably the best way to proceed in exploring our galaxy? And well, our I think um, the human role in space is complementary to the role of science in space. Um, certainly, um, just as we have, have spread around the world over, over the millennia to occupy all of it, uh, I believe that there's a future for humans uh, in living uh, on, on different planets and enjoying these different environments, but um, an understanding them scientifically um, is just a different a different pursuit that's best achieved uh, robotically, remotely. And there's a lot of talk about the science, uh, this, the hard science of, of, of Europa and uh, Europa Report. And I was just curious, they, they they travel the whole length to to the the moon, awake, right? There's no, there's a 12 months or mm -hmm. 18 months. Is that that long of a possible space journey? That is that, is that possible these days? Bigger engines, bigger rockets. Yeah. yeah. The, I mean, I mean they mention in the film that they have to spend a lot of the time in the in the in the place where gravity is generated, right? Because well, it, the, some because it doesn't they add their bones are atrophy or their their muscles and things of that nature. Right? So the film team spent a lot of time thinking about what a crew would have to do to sustain themselves against the radiation that they would encounter. Or, or be exposed to uh, on a long duration voyage, and this is the, this is actually a real problem in getting humans to Mars. Uh, and the the strategies they adapted for that uh, were to encase the spacecraft in water, so the water they were drinking was part of the walls of the spacecraft, it was protecting them somewhat from the radiation. Uh, and then the other thing they do, did was to have artificial gravity to counter bone loss. So um, yeah, there's a lot of things that aren't really hyped up. There's no one there to explain that these are happening. They're just background for the film that make it a lot more believable. Mm. How does this measure scientifically for like 2001? <laughs> you want to take a swing at that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, goodness, what was the year that 2001 was made? It was 68, yeah, okay. Um, uh, it's, it's hard to compare the two films. Um, uh, 2001 is, is obviously a, 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 a classic and, and really um, set an incredibly high bar for um, uh, due diligence to, to, to science, um, but it too took a lot of um, uh, liberties and you know, monoliths and and, uh, uh, and, and and what happens um, uh, out there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, keep in mind, of course, that we didn't know that much uh, about um, Europa and, and and these other worlds at that point in time. And we had discussions about 2001 in the early stages of, of, of this film, um, just in, in terms of like, okay, what kind of vibe do you want uh, to have? What kind? What what role do you want science to play? Um, I've consulted on a few different films where sometimes science is just like a, a pretty feather on the on the lapel of the movie. Um, other times it's you know a little more. Uh, involved and, and with this team it's very iterative and that's the secret I think to, to getting both a good story and good science is iterating with, with your science advisors and, and balancing ideas back and forth so that you can maintain good story a good story good characters uh, and good science so I kind of dodged your question but, uh, <laughs> well, that's a good answer though. that's a good answer 
And have you have you seen have you actually seen a finished product of, of the movie? Yeah, I think um, I I'd seen uh, yes for the most part. I think I saw. I saw the first screening at the oh, LA yes. Film Festival. And I believe that was the same version that's now being uh, made available online. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did you think? I was thrilled, thrilled, and uh, and I will confess that uh, the scene where Charlotte Copley ejects himself from the spacecraft um, still brings a tear to my eye. I think he did a good job in acting that, and I think there's a lot of drama in the movie that's, that's believable, both technically and uh, in a human sense. Yeah, and the way they portray scientists is, is very refreshing. Um, far too many films portray scientists as these characters exaggerated in one extreme or the other um, and uh, uh, and they really captured sort of the discipline of what it means to be a scientist and uh, the, the passion and the drive behind what uh, why we are so um, captivated by some of these big picture questions and why we would sacrifice so much for some of this uh, some of these questions. I'm going to go in the opposite direction from him. Would you do anything different if you were the filmmaker of this film, knowing um, what is the real facts and so on? Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Well, I, I'm imagining what you would say. and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to put words in your mouth, but uh, Precambrian algae. So but, yeah, just, there are tiny just, little things here and there, but those uh, are just minor things. yeah, those are just very, very minor things. Um, and uh, um, yeah, and the and the big picture. Um, no, I was three. I, I, one of the things that I think Steve and I were both um, very happy with is that they didn't. Uh, well, less is more when it comes to. The, the big reveal of, of finding life, um, and so uh, I really like the fact that that they don't um, go into a lot of the detail about the finding. Uh, it, it's really the, the they do a wonderful job of building to a scientific climax, and then that's it. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna put you. Oh, Where's the t-shirt from? And then you guys. What's that?